Hello everyone and welcome back. It is me. It is the Cyber Warrior and this is Cyber Warrior Studios presents Tech Tuesday. That's right coming at you once again for an amazing amazing lesson on Linux and here we are on chapter 10 covering the book Linux Basics for Hackers by Occupy the Web. Please if you have not yet done so go down to the link below and please purchase a copy. And also, if you enjoy the content that I put out, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I would love your thoughts, and I would just love to be able to share this lesson and all my lessons with uh, all of our fellow enthusiasts and hackers and creators and developers and things like that. So please be sure to share. Now, moving on. Like I said, today is all about file system and storage device management. Now about that is, this is very important. So before, as we're getting into it, understand this about um, Linux and, and we've discussed it before and we're going to discuss it again Linux does not have devices like you would see in Windows there is no CD or E Drive all right everything if I go back here starts with the root drive not the roots home directory not slash root legitimately just your root directory right here is a slash all right and it is uh, more of a tree system than anything all right, so it's a it's a tree file system, and hackers, it, whenever they're doing any type of testing, pen testing, anything like that, they commonly use external media. So understanding file and device structure is vital to being able to navigate their file systems, whether it's their own or someone that they are attempting to run a pen test against or a red team or anything like that. So understanding your file system is very very important. Now, getting into it. What we're gonna do is the same thing we always do is we're gonna switch over to our root user so that we are not limited in what we can do. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look. We're gonna switch over to slash dev. Now dev is your device directory. It is where all devices are held. So if I sit here and I do ls-l, and let's just scroll up a little bit. These are all files, right? And they're device files. Every single device file here, or every single file here is a device. Some of them you know, some of you don't know. CPU, DMA latency, console, uh, HID, HID raw zero, so human interface device raw zero, raw one, uh, logs, loop control, so all this is here. But what we really want to care about, all right, for this lesson is your storage devices. So we have here SDA, SDA one, two, five, and then SDB and SDB one and two. Um, and then we also have SG. Uh, now, here's the thing about SDA and SDB. These are actually your SATA drives, all right? Whether it's a USB drive or anything like that, it runs off of a SATA driver. So you have SDA1, which is gonna be your first hard drive, and then these numbers are your partitions. So SDA1 is the first partition, the second partition, the fifth partition. Where three and four went, I have no idea. This is just a standard Linux VM, so they may not have created it. It could very well be that it's swap space. So while we're covering that though, one of the things I did want you to look at is take a look at this first character here. This C, the B, and those two things will alternate. Here's the thing about those. This C right here means it is a um, character device. And what that means is things such as mice or keyboards or any other device that transmits data character by character. So it doesn't require extremely fast communication or, or transmitting data in chunks as a character device. So there's gonna be keyboards and things like that that are character devices. Anything with a B is a block device. So your hard drives, um, your CD-ROMs, your DVD-ROMs, things like that that need to transmit data in larger chunks. Those are block devices. And so what they do is they uh, transmit data at multiple bytes at a time. So just be aware of that. Now, getting into this, you also have your TTYs and um, let's see, UHID and a bunch of other devices. I don't even, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know what all these devices are. I haven't used them. And that's the thing about it is some of them you haven't even used or you've used and just don't know it, all right? So let's go ahead and clear this screen. And now what we're gonna take a look at is we're go one of the things I did wanna tell you um, is that hard drives, um, like your legacy drives, they had different designations. Keep this in mind, all right? So if you're on an older system and you see an FD0 or an FD1 or FD2, that's your floppy drive, all right? That's the older legacy de designation for floppy drives. The other one for your older hard drives 
was just HDA or HDB. All right, those are the any of the uh, IDE or enhanced IDE connections were all HDA, HDB, things of that nature. All right, so what if we wanted to view the part partitions that were on this computer or on this operating system right now? F disk dash L. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull up F disk, which is an application that allows you to look at your different, um, accomplish different tasks within on your, on your drive. Dash L is gonna list out all of the devices. So we see here, SDA1 is a Linux type, all right? And it starts at block 2048 and ends here. It's this many sectors, it's 80 gigs. SDA2 is our extended partition. And then SDA5 is gonna be our swap space. All right, so that's where if we need extra memory, um, extra RAM, that's where it ends up utilizing is that amount of space there as kind of a RAM substitute. Down here in SDB, and you can also see that it tells us the type of disk model. So because we're on a virtual machine, it's VMware, virtual S, um, it's not my actual hard drive um, specs that it's giving you. It's giving you the VMware uh, specs of the drive that's set up. Disk label DOS, the identifiers, things of that nature. Now down here where we have connected a USB drive, we have USB 2.0, all right? And then we come down here and we see the end, it starts at block zero, ends here, it's 2.8 gigs, and it's empty. And then we have SDB2, which is 432K, and it's an EFI FAT32 system. I don't even know what's on this um, USB drive anymore. I've changed it over so many times, but FDisk-L will allow you to see every partition in your computer. So it's a good thing to know and understand how those types of things work. Now, one of the things that we could do, and I'm not gonna do it, well, no, we could do it here. So SDB, even though there's nothing there. So the other thing we're gonna cover is mounting and unmounting. So if you wanna mount a drive, and you'll do, use this a lot in, um, uh, in your, in your um, ventures dealing with virtual machines and things like that, because sometimes your drives don't auto mount or you don't want them to mount automatically. So let's say we wanted to, so if I just do CD slash, and let's do LL, and we have a directory here called mount MNT. So if I do CD MNT, LS, LL, nothing there. All right, so let's clear, go back, and let's do mount slash dev slash SDB, uh, we'll say two, since I know it's a partition there, two slash MNT. Now, if I go to CD MNT, now I actually have something there. I have my EFI and my sysvol information. So apparently this is now a Windows bootable drive. Um, <clears throat> but that would be how you mount, all right? And if you wanted to, um, you can mount a drive to a particular folder and do everything within that folder. So that way you're not trying to locate that dev, that block device or something like that that you're trying to interact with. You can immediately just do it to there. Now, the other thing you could do is we can do unmount. So if we do CD, U mount, um, I don't need CD, what am I doing? U mount, and let's do slash dev, slash SDB, what did I use, two? Uh, it's busy, great, what is it? Ah. Oh, because I'm in mount, ha. Ah. There we go. If you're in a directory that is mounted, you cannot unmount it because it is reading that directory and so because that drive is active there, it's not going to allow you to do it. So now if I go to CD mount again, LL, you can see it's empty. All right, now what if we wanted to monitor our file systems and we wanna see how much disk space we had free? Well, you would do DF. DF would give you the current disks that are attached and the amount of free space you have. So you have slash dev, the devices right here, um, available, looks like 98 gigs no because the gigs uh, it's only 80 so i can't even think off the top of my head this is all in 1k blocks so um i don't, I don't like doing that i'm just gonna be honest I don't like doing that we know my sda is 80 gigs 25 percent free all right used is this much man i really wish this was in human readable uh, i wonder if df-h will do that yeah there we go df h so a lot of times when you're dealing with your file system even things like lls a dash h will turn sizes into human readable format meaning you don't have to do the math it'll actually break it down for you 
So you dev 953 megs, used temp FS, so your temporary file system 198 megs, used is only 1.2, and that's in slash run. This is slash dev. SDA1, which is our root directory, 78 gigs, 19 gigs used, 56 gigs available, okay? So DF is, is very good for monitoring your disk usage. So now let's clear that out. Um, now, what if we wanted to check our disk for errors? And actually, we're coming up on the end, so we're gonna make this quick. Um, if we wanted to check for errors, what you would run is file system check, FSCHK. Uh, oh, FSCK. Ha, uh, helps if I type in the command right. FSCK cannot be used because uh, SDA1 is mounted. So because that's mounted, I can't run it on there. But what I can run it on, is slash dev slash sdb uh two all right so since it's no longer mounted it can go through and it'll run now if you wanted to you can actually do an auto repair kind of like if you've used windows before you can auto repair issues with check disk you can actually do that here too so your file system check with a dash p is actually going to auto repair any errors we don't have any errors but if we did that's how you would run it so um, saying that though, that's all there is to really going through this. It can go a lot more in depth, don't get me wrong. It really can. There's so much you can do um, with partitioning disks and things of that nature um, between swap space or you could put your root directory, uh, your slash home and your devices, all these on different partitions for different reasons. There's a variety of reasons why you would do something like that. All right, um, but keep in mind that the more partitions you have, you're losing space, so you're gonna have to make sure when you download files or put files in certain places that you have the space for it. Because um, <clears throat> at that point, you don't have all 80 gigs. You may only have given yourself 15 without realizing it. So be aware of that. Um, once again, though, look, this has been awesome. I love helping you all out. Um, again, I'm the Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios, and you're watching Tech Tuesday. So if you got anything out of this video, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy this content, please like, comment, and if you have not done so, please subscribe. Otherwise, I will catch you all next week for another amazing episode of Tech Tuesday, where we're going to be going over Chapter 11 of Linux Basic for Hackers. And then this Friday, actually, we have another amazing episode of Security Happy Hour, live 7 p.m. Eastern Time, so make sure to check us out there. Otherwise, it's been great. I love you all. Please keep being amazing, and I'll see you all next time.